Hello everyone, I'm Jonathan Little for PokerCoaching.com, here today with another episode of Weekly Poker Hand. I want to thank you for being here with me today. If you have not, make sure you check out all the previous episodes of Weekly Poker Hand. We have a playlist on YouTube, we'll link to it below. Make sure you check it out. If you like Weekly Poker Hand, do me a quick favor, click like, click subscribe. We got all that out of the way, all the housekeeping out of the way. Let's take a look at this fun hand between Phil Helmuth and Daniel Negreanu. You know who Phil Helmuth is? Yeah, you probably do. Well, if you've been living under a rock, Phil Helmuth has 15, 5, 10, 15 World Series of Poker bracelets, $24 million in cashes. He has been around for forever. He is a dinosaur. He's playing against another dinosaur, Dan Negreanu. He has $42 million in live tournament earnings. And um, he's a world-class poker player who lost a heads-up challenge recently. <laughs> so let's take a look at this hand from their $50,000 buy-in match that took place on Poker Go. In this hand, Phil Helmuth was down to about, well, before this hand, Phil Helmuth was down to about 3,000 chips. He's clawed his way back to 27,000. Negranu limps from the small blind, and Helmuth checks a 10-8 suited, which seems fine to me. Um, it's a hand that you don't really want to raise and get re-raised, and you have to realize Negreanu is going to be limping some hands looking to re-raise, and you really don't want to get re-raised here with a 34 big blind stack. Flop comes, ace, eight, five, one club, giving Phil Helmuth middle pair, backdoor flush draw. He basically has the nuts. He checks, down Negreanu makes a half pot bet, 800 into the 1600 pot. Seems like a great spot to call. You're going to find that middle pair, bad kicker, is a hand that is very, very happy just to check call flop and try to see a cheap showdown. Okay, that's what he does. Turn is the two of diamonds, ace, eight, five, two, two diamonds now. Phil Helmuth checks. Down Negreanu bets again. He bets 2400 into the 3200 pot. Sized up a little bit. It's kind of, um, dicey. It essentially makes it very clear that Phil Helmuth's hand is a bluff catcher at this point. Typically when people use a close to pot size bet on the turn, it's usually an indicator of a polarized range. And a polarized range in this scenario is going to be something like an ace or better or a draw. And in this scenario when the backdoor diamonds come in on the turn, when the, when the draw arrives, it's very, very easy for Negreanu to have all sorts of diamond draws. He could also just have junky draws like um, seven four for a bad gut shot, right? That he would like to bet big, planning on applying a lot of pressure on the river, whether or not he hits. Um, this is a scenario where you want to make sure you do not overplay your middle pair. If you find that you drastically overplay middle pairs in this scenario, you're making a big error. We discuss this thoroughly at my site, pokercoaching.com, and we actually have a Cinco de Mayo sale going on right now. Check that out at pokercoaching.com slash Cinco to get the best prices that we've offered in quite a while. So does Helmuth butcher it? No, he calls. That seems great. River is the 10 of hearts. Is this a spot where you lead when you make two pair? I do not think so. In this scenario, if Negranu does have a strong hand, you want to check and give him every opportunity to continue bet value betting, right? You don't want to lead and allow him to just, you know, call, right? Because whenever you take the check call, check call lead river line, it's usually going to be on the stronger side, although you may have some bluffs. That said, Helmuth really did not take this line as a bluff ever. Um, also, if Negranu is bluffing, if he's sitting here with a 7-4 for nothing, you really want to check to give him every possible opportunity to bluff you, right? If you lead, he's just going to fold. So this is a very, very nice spot to check. Phil Helmuth plays it great so far. And now Negranu bets 4,800. Interesting bet size. It's about a little touch more than half pot, so not an especially big bet. What would you do in this spot if you were Phil Helmuth with 24,000 remaining in your stack? I want you to think about this spot. Take your time, pause the video, and write in the comment section below if you would fold. Don't do that. Would you call? Would you raise small to about 10,000? Or would you go all in? Pause the video and write what you would do in the comment section below. All right, I hope you did that. Going through this active learning process is gonna go a long way to helping you improve your poker skills. If you just sit around and uh, passively learn and hope you absorb some of this stuff while you're in la la land, well, you're probably not going to soak up all that much of it. But if you are thinking about this, committing to an answer, then your skills are going to improve. 
We have over a thousand interactive quizzes at pokercoaching.com, by the way. Again, check it out, pokercoaching.com slash Cinco. This is a spot where, depending on your overall strategy, I think Fel Helmuth should either call if Negranu thinks you are so weak, to so tight, so straightforward that you will literally never run a bluff, or you should put in a raise. Now, from a GTO point of view, I think you probably need to be going all in because there are a lot of busted draws. Pretty much anytime there's a lot of busted draws available that you could potentially bluff with, you're going to want to use a large size. If there are almost no busted draws, but you still have a value hand you want to raise, you'll find that often in that scenario you should go for a small size because there just are no bluffs in your range, right? Um, we discuss this thoroughly in my tournament masterclass in the river section. If you're a poker coaching premium member, make sure you check that out. So... The question is, is Phil Helmuth perceived to be so weak, so tight, so straightforward to the point that he would never run an all-in bluff? Ugh, I don't know, maybe. And the reason I say this is because if Negranu will value bet a hand like Ace-King in this scenario, but then fold it to a raise, then, you know, raising starts to become pretty dicey because then what are you going to get called by, right? You're going to get called by two pair and better. And a lot of the two pair that Negranu is going to have are going to be an ace with another pair, right? Which you lose to. However, one big thing that I think is quite important here is that Negranu did not actually go for a polarized type size on the river. Notice he went 4,800 into the 8,000 pot. When he goes this size, again, Negranu is a world-class player, but typically from a GTO point of view, you're going to find that this range to use a non-polarized betting size, like, like compared to if he bet 8,000. In this scenario, he's gonna have some nuts, which Helmuth conveniently blocks with his two pair, right? He blocks pocket 10s, pocket 8s, ace 10 and ace 8. Um, and also he's gonna be betting mostly with strong but non-nut hands. So a few nuts, a lot of pretty much aces, right? And then some bluffs, some small portion of bluffs. And if that is actually Negranu's range, and he will call off with some hands like ace-king, ace-queen, ace-jack, maybe ace-nine. Then I think Helmuth has a very, very reasonable river raise. And I do think he should go for a large size. And to be fair, if Helmuth thinks Negranu is going to fold out like ace-king here, then he should be bluffing a whole lot, right? So does Helmuth make the play? Does he do it? Does he go all in? He just calls. How does Phil Helmuth never go for value on the river? I don't understand. Why in the world does he consistently just call when he has the effect of nuts on the river? I don't. How, how are you going to win the match if you just call when you have the nuts? Phil, Phil, get value from Negranu, please. I can't handle this. I'm out of here. Howdy, partners. Station Master Little here with a public service announcement. It's come to my attention that a few of you have become extreme calling stations. Now, I love calling. I'm the Station Master after all. But you can't call a queen high every time. Sometimes you have to fold. Click subscribe to make sure you don't become a super station.